Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. We're riding that powers train. Did you think we were out of restrictions after part 3? Well you thought wrong. I'm Sasha and these are the Top 10 Superheroes with Weird Power Restrictions Part 4. That's right, 40 heroes. Top 40 Nerd. Let's get started. Frogman. He first debuted in Marvel Team Up number 121 back in 1982, and is low on this list because his restrictions are tech based and easily fixable. So, Frogman is Eugene Paul Patillo. His father had been the villain Leapfrog. One day, Eugene found his father's old villain costume in the closet and decided that he was going to reclaim the costume and help his father get over his demons about his bad frog themed life choices by becoming a hero, Frogman. Upon his earlier outings, all of Eugene's success was accidental, like capturing Speed Demon an accident. And his father is actually super disappointed in him, but he still helps him. So what is Frogman's restriction, aside from general incompetence? Well, the costume itself is wonky. The springs in it mean that he can't hop in a straight line, which admittedly is disorienting for his adversaries, but also for him. So Frogman is meant to be more comedic, which I need to say, because otherwise you all just assume I don't know that. I know. It doesn't mean they can't have restrictions or still be fun and awesome like who you like. And if Frogman is your hero, enjoy with pride. Number 9. Ambush Bug Ambush Bug has been both a hero and a villain, and to most to encounter him, annoying. He first debuted in DC Comics Presents number 52 back in 1982. So his powers include teleportation, which used to be activated via his suit and then it was incorporated into his actual being. However, in the early days, so we're talking people noticed it in DC Comics Presents number 81, he used to have to activate his powers by saying, Simon says. Oh. Why? Why Simon Says? Simon Says, teleport. Ambush Bug was aware of his status as a comic book character and breaks the fourth wall like there's no tomorrow. But it's hard to accomplish this without the character becoming irritating, a feat that Deadpool has managed to avoid for most, but not all. Some have no time for Deadpool. Simon Says he doesn't have to do that anymore, which is good because it's not his biggest selling point. Number 8. Vibe Now thanks to the CW's Flash series, many people are now aware of Vibe, who up until that point had become a little bit of a forgotten character, or rather a bit of a buried one. He first appeared in Justice League of America Annual No. 2 back in 1984, and had quite the impressive power set. He could generate shockwaves strong enough to shatter concrete or steel. However, at first, he had to activate his powers by breakdancing, because he was super hip and cool with the kids. He was into their lingo and interests. Please read comics, kids of the 80s and 90s. Look, he's breakdancing. Now, he's still a good breakdancer, but since 2013, his powers were revamped and are more in line with what you see on the CW, interdimensional physics, etc. So yeah, his restrictions is long gone, but it's still fun to remember. You know who remembered and had a fun episode about it? Teen Titans Go, which people are sleeping on because they're still bitter about the 2003 Teen Titans series cancellation. Missing out. It's not as silly as people say. And also, silly doesn't have to be bad. Just look at all that love for Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. Number 7. Shatterstar Shatterstar comes to us from the planet Mojo World and debuted in the New Mutants number 99 back in 1991, so he's extreme. Check out some of his original art by Rob Liefeld, the non-existent in eyes, the tiny feet. My childhood. When it comes to abilities, Shatterstar is stacked. Superhuman strength and intellect, so fast he can dodge speeding bullets, but I mean so can Spider-Man after learning Kung Fu. No, I'm never going to let that go. But there are some of his abilities he uses minimally, just because they are a lot for him to maintain. One is his control of electrical frequencies, because it leaves him tired. And when you have so many powers to choose from, why not just pick another? Another one, and this is one he developed later, is teleportation of people and objects across vast distances. But he's got the take your life into your own hands, maybe we're Going to be split into two teleportation. The transporter from Star Trek fear, but we're not going to get two Rikers. No, if he gets distracted, you're being split. Part of you is going to be where you were going, and the other half is going to be where you started. I'm just taking a ship. I'm not taking the risk. Or I'm finding someone with more credible teleportation powers. Number six, Doll Man. Now, we recently talked about Doll Man in our list of dumb DC superpowers, which was a fun one. Again, you can love someone with lame powers. It's okay. So, Doll Man first debuted in Feature Comics number 27 back in 1939. It was a creation of Quality Comics, who also featured the likes of Plastic Man and Firebrand, and those are the ones most people would know. Their assets were acquired by DC after the company folded in 1956. They couldn't survive the decline in interest in comic books, especially with a roster of lesser known characters, and hence were absorbed. Dollman, the first Dollman, 
man is Daryl Dane, the Earth's mightiest might, a man who can shrink down to the size of a doll, so six inches. The thing is, that's the only height he can shrink to. There's no in between, just full size or doll size. The comics weren't great at portraying this because artists would vary his size, so he'd be standing next to objects and proportionally it would be wrong. But this was an error, not a secret hidden power. He was also only as strong as a man his size would be, so in short, not very. Pun fully intended. My favorite thing about Doll Man is his covers. They're all meant to make him look impressive, but they're really funny. Like him tied up under a tap, or him trying to pry apart a regular sized pair of scissors. Number 5. The Wonder Twins Form of having to be trapped with your sibling to activate your powers. These twins, Zan and Jaina, were created for the all new Super Friends Hour and debuted in the episode Joyride. They were modeled off of Donnie and Marie Osmond, teen sensations at the time. Huzzah. Their powers could only be activated via fist bump or high five and saying the words form of or powers activate. And then Jaina could turn into any animal, even if it was mythological or imaginary, but she had to say the right one or she'd turn into something else. And Zane could turn into water of any form, which has since been expanded to liquid. Which people lectured me about last time, saying that it could be useful. But come on, you have to try and get really dark, like he turns into vapor and floods a villain's lungs, or he could also turn to liquid nitrogen. He could turn to water and then freeze and cover them. But this was the all new Super Friends hour, that wasn't gonna happen. Now I'm just imagining an evil Zan. Anyway, their restriction is having to get together to activate their powers. So keep them separate and you're good, sorta. They do have a telepathic link, though they kinda play it off like twins, or they used to. Now it's full telepathy. Form of, Zan is scarier than people think, and if we keep making fun of him, maybe one day he'll snap. Number four, Steel. Firstly, never forget that there was a terrible 90s superhero film about Steel starring Shaquille O'Neal. Watch it and enjoy the cheese. Now the character of Dr. John Henry Irons first debuted in The Adventures of Superman number 500 back in 1993, and played a prominent role in the reign of the Superman arc, which followed the death of Superman, aka Kelly's least favorite comic book arc of all time. He even tried to help Superman during his fatal fight with Doomsday, as Superman had saved his life prior. Now the death of Superman arc was largely conceived of for two reasons. One, to boost dwindling Superman sales, and two, as padding in the lead up to the writer's true intended arc, The Wedding of Lois and Clark, which they had to put spot so it would line up with the wedding of the then airing Adventures of Lois and Clark. Cross promotion. An engineer, Irons built his own armor and filled in for Superman. Also fun fact, out of all the stand-ins, he was Lois's favorite. He proved so popular he would get his own solo series, Steel. So why is he here? He's here because one of the armors he wore, the Entropy Aegis, gave him godlike strength and let him grow in size. But there was one problem. It turned him into a violent, angry man and was eating away at his soul. And in comics, that's literal, not metaphorical. So yeah, couldn't use it. Restriction. Had to go back to less evil armor. Just for bad jokes sake. He's literally the Man of Steel. Better Man of Steel than Snyder's. Hey yo! I'm sorry, there are parts of that movie that are good, but it just makes it so easy. Just low hanging fruit. Number 3. Cypher. Cypher first debuted in New Mutants number 13 back in 1984, and is another one with really cool abilities, and they're intuitive and have to do with comprehension and translation and problem solving. Deciphering codes, computer languages, assessing structural integrity, it makes him a great strategist and problem solver to have on a team. However, because everything happens subconsciously, he can't explain to you how he got to the conclusion he got to. Now some of you are going, why? What's the big deal with that? Well, it's all good if he's doing everything, but what if he has to explain what he's doing to someone else so they can do it? He can't because he doesn't know. So yeah, could be a problem, usually isn't, but here at Top 10 Nerd we're preparing for all eventualities. Number 2. Rainbow Girl Another one from our dumb powers list. The universes are colliding, we're heading for infinite crisis. She debuted in Adventure Comics number 309 back in 1963, and can tap into the emotion spectrum, which has now been determined to be the same one as the Green Lanterns. The thing with her powers is that she's not fully sure how they work, and they cause her intense mood swings, so she can't tap into the emotion she wants. She can't do it on command. Well, sometimes she can, but in the early days, that was definitely not the case. Created as a bit of a joke for the League of Substitute Heroes, aka the backup Legion to the League, B Squad, the D Squad, the Z Squad, <laughs> some feel she needs a massive overhaul and that her base conception was sexist. I definitely think you could weaponize empathy, but then you'd be a supervillain, just using feelings to manipulate and hurt. She could be very powerful. Maybe she already is. Number one, Penance, aka Speedball. He debuted in the Amazing Spider Man Annual number 22. He's Robbie Baldwin. He can create a kinetic force field and absorb the kinetic energy around him to reflect it back at an even greater force. That was when he was Speedball, a name that had to be changed because, well, drug references. Now he's Penance, and his powers have changed slightly. For a while he thought that they were gone, but he was wrong. What it was is that he could only use them if he felt pain, hence his new name. The new suit he wears is constantly digging into his skin, and he has developed a pretty high pain tolerance, but this is the only way he can operate. There are 612 spikes facing inwards in the suit to represent the number
number of people who lost their lives in a tragic event he was part of. 60 of the spikes are longer to represent the kids that died. So yeah, he's not okay. His powers now no longer require this, but they are boosted by it. Still for a time, this was quite the restriction. So those were 10 more superheroes with weird power restrictions. Which restriction struck you as the oddest? And are we still missing some? Let us know down below. Thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more nerdy lists. And we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.